In this video, we're going to talk about another Final Cut Pro 10 tool. This tool is going to be the Range Selection Tool. So in your toolbar, you have a little Tools menu, which is normally the Select or the Arrow tool. You could push and hold on this menu, and then you'll see the Range Selection Tool. The letters on the right side are the shortcut to activate the tool. So you could also just press the letter R on the keyboard, which with the tools, especially if you're switching back and forth between the range selection tool and other tools very commonly, I strongly recommend getting used to using those letters on the keyboard because it's just so much quicker. So for example, if I know I'm done with the range tool, I can switch back to the arrow or the selection tool using the A key on the keyboard. And now if I want to switch to the range selection tool, I press the letter R and it switches right to it. Additionally, you can temporarily activate a tool just by holding down the button uh, while you use it. So for example, I can use the range selection tool by holding the letter R. I can continue to hold R, do something with that tool, and then when I let go of R, notice it switches automatically back to the arrow tool. So why what might, would you want to use the range selection tool? Because in the, the browser here, when you're looking at your clips, you can just click and drag across a clip to select part of it and that selects a range. That's what your ranges are, those yellow boxes around a clip. Then you might mark it as a favorite or delete it or, or do something else. Well, in the timeline, when you've built your project down here, if you try to click and drag across the clip, notice it moves it. And that's not what we want to do. We want to actually select part of this clip and maybe delete it or do something else with it. So that's where the range selection tool comes in. I can click and drag across this clip, and I've selected that part and if I hit the delete key, it would just delete part of that clip. Um, I'm going to do undo because I don't actually want to delete that. And um, that's a way to select a range. I'm going to hit the A key on the keyboard and click and drag across this audio. Because this is another huge part, at least for me, that I use the range selection tool all the time for. Because notice I've selected that range, and by raising up the audio, it's set four keyframes. So set a keyframe here, 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 and here. So now it raises the volume up here, it plays for a little bit, and then it fades out at the end part here. So I use that all the time, especially with music. Let me show you that example as well. If you have a music track underneath your uh, song, this is dialogue, let me get a, an actual music track. Here we go, green is music, so we'll use this track. So if I know that she's gonna be talking at this point, I want the music to fade out. So I'm going to hold the R key on the keyboard to select my range selection tool. I'm going to click and drag across the part of the, the music. I'm done with range, so I can let go of R, and it switches back to my arrow tool. And then I'll click and drag across to lower the audio, usually about maybe negative 18 or so for that. So now what's, what's happened is with the range selection tool, it's automatically lowered the volume for that portion and then come right back up. So that's a way to use the range selection tool. You can also use it in the video and audio uh, animator windows. Uh, so I just use control V to activate that. Maybe if you're working with the opacity, we can show the opacity here and I can select my range tool, uh, my range selection tool, click and drag across part of the clip, make an adjustment. And just like with the audio, it's added four keyframes to fade this clip down and then it'll fade it up at the end there. So that's using the range selection tool to edit and work with specific sections of a clip with inside of Final Cut Pro 10. But did you know you can also export just a specific part of your project using the range selection tool? You can. To do it, if I want to export just this portion of the video, maybe I don't need these first couple of clips, I could do that. I'll just hold down the R key to activate my range selection tool, and then I'll click and drag across this portion of the video. So now I've selected just, uh, what is it, 23 seconds out of the total 3 minute and 48 second video. And if I go up to share, we'll share this as a Apple devices 7 or 2080, 1080p project. Uh, this is going to be our test project. It's not our cheeseburger project anymore. And this is about the range selection tool. But did you notice at the bottom here, it's saying that it's a range, that's a range selection tool logo, 
and it's just going to export 23 seconds and 15 frames of this project. So when you have that range selected, it's just going to export that range. And that's something just to keep in mind. If you're trying to export your project and it's not exporting the entire thing, it could be because a range is selected. But once we hit share, it would export just the range selection tool part there and that we've made selected. So if you don't want your range selected, if you don't want this yellow portion there anymore, just switch to your select tool, your arrow tool, click in the empty gray area, and notice no more selection of this cheeseburgers project is activated. So that's the range selection tool. Selection tool. I hope you learned something. If you did, give this video a thumbs up there. Let me know. That's how I can keep track of what videos are working the best and which ones are not. And if there's something specific you would like to learn, send me a message either through the comments below or using the email address finalcutprohelp at me.com, me.com. And I will do my best to answer that question, hopefully in a timely manner. Otherwise, you have a wonderful rest of your day.